This story is all about what if Naruto's biological mother was Kagaya Atsutsuki. After the war the village betrays him, only three people left close to him. The bijou resealed against their wills. In an attempt to bring the bijou back to him so he could save them he inadvertently reforms the jubi. After speaking to it he finds out who his real mother is. Kagaya Atsutsuki the woman he defeated in the war. Descendant of Amaterasu and the Shinju. Before we start kindly like and subscribe to this channel and look over the description box for the author of this amazing storyline. Welcome aboard! Chapter 9 Naruto got back to the train car via his marker that Talia set up and chuckled at the sight in front of him. Luke and Grover were sleeping in a big SUV and Zoe was sleeping in a Ferrari. Then there was his daughter. She was sleeping in a Mercedes with Annabeth, who was currently being held in his daughter's arms and smiling happily in her sleep. He knew almost for certain that Annabeth had a crush on his daughter and he felt his daughter felt the same way. He had no problem with it, especially since incest was a major thing in his home realm as well as something big here with the gods. A little same-sex relationship was nothing compared to the weirdness of it all. He moved the blanket over them more and smiled as her brushed some of her hair out of her face. She smiled and cuddled with Annabeth and pulled her closer unconsciously. He chuckled as he silently closed the car door. He knew Percy was still inside his pocket dimension, he definitely needed to talk to the kid and he summoned a, summoned a clone to go bring someone else who could help. He activated his eyes and warped into his pocket dimension. Pocket Dimension Naruto could see Percy slashing at a pillar with an annoyed look on his face. Percy you won't be able to cause much damage. Get over here, we need to have a serious talk he says making Percy turn around and glare at him. Why? You're just gonna call me an idiot again and knock me out he says with a frown. Naruto runs his hands through his hair and sighs yes I might have been a little rough recently but you have realized I was very much like you when I was your age. Always rushing into things and not thinking things over he says as he sits down and Percy looks at him confused. Since the day I was born I had been an orphan. My dad died protecting me and well long story with my mother he said as Percy sat down but still had somewhat of a glare. At the age of four I had to raise myself so I wasn't that good. But over the years I learned rushing into battle only gets people killed. You really need to think stuff over. Just because your dad is who the is doesn't automatically make you strong, you make yourself strong he says with a sigh. But you're a son of chaos? Doesn't that make you like instantly strong? He asks. Naruto chuckles, kid, when I graduated my village's training academy, I was dead last, I couldn't make a decent clone, I had no techniques like the other kids did, but after a war started, I learned to get serious and worry of others, getting stronger to protect my precious people he says, he says, making Percy nod. But you must remember one thing, not everyone can be saved. There will always be casualties, and if you think you can stop them then you will only cause more he says, making Percy frown as he was about to interrupt him. Now I'm not saying to just stand by and let people die but to try and save those you can and protect those precious to you, like your friends, family and loved ones he says as Percy nods, understanding his point. I don't mean to be rash, it's just when I see a friend in trouble, I feel the need to help them, he says nervously. Naruto chuckles and nods that is understandable, but sometimes they can handle themselves better than you can. Though I will still do everything I can to protect my fiancé and daughter, call it a fatherly instinct, he said with a smile. But the thing is you don't need to save everyone, just get strong enough so you can back them up if they were to falter and start to fall. Easiest way to protect them without coddling them he said as Percy nodded. Thanks Naruto he says with a small smile. Anytime kid, now you can either chose to stay with us but you have to listen to Talia or go back to camp. Normally I wouldn't be offering this but I feel you could learn something from this he said as he ran his hand through his hair with a sigh. Percy shook his head no I think I should return to camp and train. I need to think by myself and figure things out. Tell Talia I'm sorry for being a jerk he said as Naruto nodded and summoned a clone to take Percy back to camp. He smiled as the kid left his realm as he nodded to him. He nodded back and made his way back to the train car. Next morning. He was woken up by someone shaking his him. 
He chose to sleep up against the car Talia and Annabeth were sleeping in, feeling it would be better for him to not be in a confided car so he could defend them easier if he needed to. He opened his eye to see Luke looking at him, we need to get off, it's the last stop Luke says as Naruto nods and stands up. He could see Zoe still glaring at him a bit, Grover was eating his cans as Annabeth, Annabeth and Talia both had red faces. He smirked as he figured they had woken up in their embarrassing position, he found it cute. He stretched his sore limbs as Talia opened up the train car well, last stop she says as she jumps out and tumbles to protect herself. Annabeth follows after her as Zoe and the rest also jump out. Grover had a bit of trouble but Luke helped him. Naruto jumped down and landed gracefully and dusted off his pants well we know where Artemis is but what of this bane of Olympus she was hunting? I think we need to grab that first he says as Zoe frowns. What of Lady Artemis? She asks glaring at him. Relax we know where she is but I think we should capture this beast she was hunting first so it doesn't get into the hands of the titans he says as he walks past her. If I go into sage mode I can feel for any strange energies and we can fly there since Zeus is out of commission still he says as they follow him. What do you want us to do? Talia asks as they look around to where they were. Gila Claw, Arizona. Can't say I like this place Luke says as he had a bad feeling about it. Be on guard, I feel this might be the land without rain Naruto said as he sat down in front of the convenience store. Go inside and get some food and supplies, I need to focus on sage mode otherwise I would have summoned it he said as he closed his eyes to ease into it. He eased into it and felt out for any strange energies. He felt a strange energy a few miles away as well as two gods coming their way. He could feel Ares's energy and another that felt like a goddess. If Ares and another were coming to visit, he would deal with them later, he focused on the original strange energy and stood up as the others came out from the store. We need to head west from here as I think I found what Artemis was hunting but, but we have to head through there he said pointing off to the nearby junkyard. They all frowned and were about to follow him when a large limo drove up. He sighed, what do you want Ares? He asked as the war god stepped out of the driver's seat. Well, the lady in the back wishes to talk to you and your daughter he says as he lowers his glasses. He didn't have any bad feelings towards the blonde but he still disliked being beaten in battle by him so easily and the fact he was controlled by the damn titan. Naruto sighed Ares, we are in a hurry, please just let us go on our way. Apologize to Aphrodite for us please he says as he could practically feel the lust rolling in waves from the back seat. Ares shook his head, she is here to help, it won't take long, he says as he opens the door. Naruto groans fine. Come on Talia, he says as he heads in the limo. It was much bigger on the inside and frilly and pink. At the end of the car was a woman that was very beautiful but she had nothing on Hestia. She had long blonde almost golden hair and dark blue eyes. She was wearing a long red gown and had a smile that reminded him of Cheyenne whenever she tried to get a baby from him and he wasn't very fond of it. Talia followed him in shortly after and frowned at the pink just as he did. Well, I have got to say you are just as handsome as I remembered, she says with a flirty smile. He frowned, he knew Aphrodite would be like this, but he had hoped it wouldn't be this bad. Aphrodite, we really do not have time for this. Artemis is in trouble and I know where to go. What can you tell me that could be of use? He asks with frown as Aphrodite frowned and Talia smirked at her father being unaffected by Aphrodite. You are no fun, here I came here to help and you are being so cold to little old me, she says wiping away a fake tear. He sighs please, just tell me what you came to tell me and my daughter he says as he leans back and crosses his arms. She sighs, slightly upset her charm speak wasn't working fine, I know where you are heading and I have to warn you that my husband's junkyard, junkyard, he gets testy whenever there are people in there she says as she waves him off until looking to Talia. Talia frowned, she was happy to be silent throughout the interaction between her father and the love goddess. You are a very unique love life, who would have ever guessed you were a dash she says getting interrupted by a blushing Talia. Shut up! She yells as she covers her dad's ears. He chuckles and lets her continue. Look I don't want you messing with anything of mind Talia says as she uncovers her dad's ears. I don't like being messed with and I can deal with myself, she says as she kicks open the door and walks out. 
Aphrodite smirked and turned to Naruto, did you know she likes Annabeth? She says wanting a bit of revenge for being yelled at by a demigod. Naruto chuckled as he went to the door yup and I'm proud of her he says closing it behind him, never noticing the frown from the goddess. Naruto smiled as he saw Talia storm off with a blush to Annabeth and the group. He turned to Ares feel free to call me whenever you want a good spar or fight. I kinda want to see how strong you are when you are in control of yourself, he says, silently slipping him a marker. Ares nodded and smirked always one for a good spar. Maybe I'll do it when I'm bored, he said as he went into the driver's seat. Naruto watched the limo drove off. He turned his attention to the large junkyard as he had a bad feeling about it all. He didn't want to go through it but he knew it was the only way to where they needed as he felt ancient energies blocking their path to everywhere but the junkyard. He could have broken through it but he'd rather not put the others in danger from doing so. Dad, do we really have to go through there? Talia asks as everyone else follows behind her. Zoe was to the side as she didn't like being near the other others. Yes, why are we going through there? With your abilities I'm sure you could easily find a way around Zoe says with a mocking tone when she said abilities. Yes, I could but some ancient powers are blocking it and I'd rather not alert them of where we are right now. They would know we are going through here but not of when so we need the surprise element he said as he activated his eyes to double check. All around them was swirling golden energy and it acted as a wall to the junkyard and it surrounded the town as well. He didn't like leaving it be or going into their hand, but then again whenever he uses to rush into things it would never go well. He opened the gate and turned to the group no one take anything and I think we will be fine he said as the others nodded alone. Grover looked around as so Naruto, what did you and Aphrodite talk about? He asks as he looks around the junkyard as he followed the blonde. Naruto shrugged his shoulders she tried to mess with me but thankfully illusions don't work on me. Plus I am loyal to my fiancé he says rubbing his ring with a smile. Luke was walking next to Annabeth and Talia as Zoe was ahead of the group as she didn't wish to dirty herself with the presence of males. So how exactly was living with Naruto? Also, you mentioned something of a house Luke asks as he never had gotten around to visiting Hestia cabin, mostly because he felt he didn't deserve being in it. He still felt too dark to be in there. Talia nodded living with him was great. He always cared for me and looked out for me. He also trained me hard but not to a breaking point. And yes, he owns a house but he doesn't want me to say so no god finds out she says as she smiles and follows after her father. Zoe frowned, she didn't like the man. He defeated her mistress like it was nothing, nothing and then Artemis became nearly friendly with him. She needed to summon that warrior that her mistress set up with the weird three-pronged knife. They continued through the junkyard until they came up on a large robot laying in a heap, submerged in a pile of junk. Naruto knew what it was, Talos or at least an earlier version of it and he didn't feel safe around it as he could see gold energy pooling into it. He held up a hand and got on guard as Talos burst from the pile as it loomed down on them. Damn it! Zoe covers us long range with Annabeth. Talia and Luke try and cut its feet with your blades. Grover uses your magic to try and slow it down. He orders as they nod, or in Zoe's case glare, and go off to help. He stares down Talos as it struck its fist down on him. He easily summoned a Sasano arm to block it as he held the fist to allow Talia and Luke to try and slash at it. Strangely none of the blades could cut through it, not even Kozanagi. He noticed the golden energy was keeping it from getting hurt or even bound up by Grover's vines. He knew one weakness to metal and that was heat, intense heat. Like lava. Get back. I can handle this. He says as Talia and Luke back off to where Zoe was. He took several deep breaths as he opened his eyes to reveal two yellow eyes with white irises beast transformation, four tails. His body turned into a gorilla form with crimson red fur and two of his teeth became large tusks with black tips and a bone-like crown grew with two upward pointing horns also with black tips. He had a green chest with four long tails with alligator-like spikes on them. He pounded his chest as he smirked at Talos as lava dripped from his mouth and coat his arms Son Goku, the great and proud. He was also a powerful user of lava he said as he flexed his fingers. 
Talos tried to attack him, but he was able to melt through one of the arms and pierce its chest. He frowned as the arm reattached as it was shrouded in the golden energy. It was going to be harder than he thought. He ran his hands through the seal's lava-style earthen eruption. He yelled as he slammed his hands down making the ground quake and lava burst from underneath Talos and melted to nothing but a bile of molten metal. He erased the excess lava and turned to the group as he eased back to normal well that was interesting he said as he stretched his limbs. Everyone was surprised, except for Talia. The power Naruto had was insane and it slightly annoyed Zoe. He looked back to the melted pile of metal to see two fists sticking out of it. They shrunk down to the size of his hands and seemed to roll down to him. He shrugged his shoulders and sealed them away, curious as to what the hell they were but would find out later. They made their way out of the junkyard and they breathed a sigh of relief. Glad to be out of there. Talos was insane Annabeth says with a frown. She worried how they would have handled it without him. Luke nods, well now where do we go? He asks as Naruto strokes his chin. We need to go to the strange energy I felt so we can capture whatever Artemis was hunting he said as he ran his hands through the seals and slammed them down summoning Jutsu, Hawk contract he calls out as smoke enveloped the area. In a flap of their wings the hawks cleared the smoke. How may we be of service Naruto-sama? One of the four hawks says as he looks around. I need transportation to somewhere and possibly after to another area. Am I allowed to do so? He asks as the hawks nod. Yes, you may, as long as next time we get some meat, he says with a slight smirk. Naruto chuckles okay. Luke and Grover on one, Annabeth and Talia in another, Zoe on the third and I will take the head chief, he says as they nod and the, the hawks help them up. How are you able to bring talking animals to you? Zoe asks confused. I have a contract with their clan. I can summon them to help me in battle or in this case transportation when I need to as long as I don't abuse it he said as he put his hand on the hawk's head. Can you feel the energy source I marked? He asked getting a nod from the hawk. He got on and smirked at everyone hold on everyone. He said as the hawks took off. Thankfully Zeus was still unconscious or else who knows how long this would have taken as the wolves don't like being used for transportation, the foxes were better for stealth and sneaking in areas, and the slugs were healing kind but could still be strong with their acid. As they flew for an hour or two he remembered how he always enjoyed flying. He would be doing it on his own but he wanted to keep that secret for a bit, he didn't like his abilities being known to everyone. He only summoned the hawks since it would be easier to explain. Naruto-sama, do you know what exactly we are looking for? I can sense the energy but that is about it the hawk said as they got near a dam. Just drop us off near the entrance and I can take over the search he says as the hawk nods and calls to others making them go down for a landing. Everyone got off their hawk and looked at where they were and Annabeth squealed. Do you see where we are? The Hoover Dam. She says with metaphorical stars in her eyes that make Grover, Luke and Talia chuckle and roll their eyes. Naruto chuckled and summoned a clone, I want you all to find some food and maybe relax a bit. I need to find this beast she was hunting, sadly something is messing with my senses he says as they nod and head off with the clone. He stared up at the massive concrete construct inside, might as well go from the top to the bottom he thought as he started walking up the dam, dam, hiding himself with a genjutsu. He eventually made his way up to the top to hear a strange sound, one of a cow mowing. He peered over the water to see a strange beast, a mix between a bull and a fist. The Athiotaurus, a cursed beast burdened by having the ability to bring down Olympus if sacrificed. He couldn't understand it but it could feel what it felt. It was scared and it just wanted to live peacefully and live. The Athiotaurus swam over to him and looked at him curiously as he stuck his hand in the water to pet it. Poor thing, you just want to be able to live your life, don't you? He asks getting a sad move from it. How about I bring you somewhere safe until I can get you a definite safe area? He says getting a vigorous nod from the cowfish. He summons another clone to swim next to it now I will keep this clone with you to keep you company, just don't be too rough with it he said as it nodded and nuzzled against the clone. Strange beast he thought as he sent the clone and the Afiatoris to his pocket dimension. 
He sighed and made his way to the top entrance just as his clone dispelled and the group appeared at the door with a look of worry on their faces. Dad, we need to go. Talia says as she bars the door. With the clone shortly after parting ways. Talia was currently being dragged along by Annabeth as she wanted to show them all the Hoover Dam. Naruto just chuckled as Luke and Grover just shook their heads at their friend. Zoe on the other hand wasn't enjoying herself at all stop messing around. We need to find the damn snack bar she says making everyone look at her and start cracking up. Tea the damn snack bar? Talia says in between laughs I could really use some damn french fries she says hunching over in laughter. And I really need to use the damn restroom. Grover says cracking up with Talia. Annabeth tried to hold in her laughs as she leaned against Luke as he also was struggling to hold in his laughter. Zoe looked confused what? What is so funny? She asks confused. Naruto just sighs and chuckles just let it go Zoe, let's make our way to the snack bar he said as he was able to hide his laughter. They went off to eat as he felt dark energies making their way towards them. He was just a clone so he couldn't do much. Guys grab your food and make your way to the food, some things are coming our way he says as they frown. The skeletons again? They attacked us at the museum while you were fighting the lioness Annabeth says with a frown as Talia stands up. Nothing works on them dad so be careful, we'll make our way to you she says as the others go and run off to the roof. He sighs as he activates his eyes maybe I can use the human path to kill them? He thinks. Won't work Naruto. These things have no souls, they are just soulless soldiers summoned by that titan you fought Shinju says as he boosted Naruto's senses to help him. Naruto frowned while I can still slow them down he thinks as he makes his way to the energies. He was taken from his thoughts as someone crashed into him. He looked down to see a girl roughly Annabeth's age. She had very curly red hair and freckles lining her cheeks and bridge of her nose. She wore paint-covered jeans and a simple green t-shirt. She rubbed her face out. What did I hit? A brick wall? She says as she looks up to him. Whoa, freaky eyes she says making Naruto raise an eyebrow in confusion. Hmm so she is clear-sighted like Sally? He thinks as he helps her up. Sorry about that but can you really see my eyes? He asks as he has them spin. Whoa freaky and of course I can, she says as the door bursts open behind her to reveal an army of skeletons. A are those skeletons? She asks slightly afraid. He nods and picks her up I can explain later but first, he looks to the skeletons Amaterasu he calls out making a wall of fire set up to only burn the skeletons, thankful that his grandmother gave him the ability to choose what it burns. He quickly ran off until he got somewhere safe to set Rachel down who was somewhat blushing I think we are safe now he said as he set her down. Sorry about that but rather do that than get you in danger because of me. She nodded T thanks can you tell me your name? She asks as she hides her blush with her hair. Name's Naruto Atsutsuki, what about you? He asks as he smiles at her. Rachel Elizabeth Dare now can you tell me what the hell all that was? She yells waving her hands back to where they ran from. He sighs and runs his hands through his hair I can explain later but not right now he hands her a marker. Stab that in the ground to call me but do it maybe in a few days. I am in a rush today he says as she frowns. She was about to question him more until he disappeared in a puff of smoke. She was definitely confused. She stared down at the weird knife he gave her and slipped it in her backpack. Back with the real Naruto. He frowned at the fact that Amaterasu had little effect on them, they were like impure world reincarnations all over again. Talia summon your eagles I can hold them back as I think I have a way to slow down their revival or even end them all together he says as he summons the truth seeking orbs. He couldn't believe he forgot about them, hopefully they still affected these versions since they were similar. He transforms them into giant senbons as the group went back some way away from the door. Seconds later the doors burst open and he sent two senbons through two skeletons and sadly they didn't destroy them like they did with the impure versions most likely due to the fact they had no soul and they were just pure bones. At least he could slow them down with the orbs. He sent more through the skeleton.
skeletons to pin them to the walls as his daughter call out to him dad. Come on. She yells. He looks back to see a giant eagle with everyone on it. He quickly erases the orbs and dashes to the eagle and jumps on it. The second he got on the eagle took off. Where to? The eagle asks in a booming voice. San Francisco, Mount Othries. Feel for the dark energy and the energy of a goddess, shouldn't be too hard he says as the eagle nods and focuses on flying. San Francisco? Annabeth mumbles with a frown as Talia holds her hand to show her that she is there for her. She smiled and held Talia's hand back. Luke patted her back as well as they kept flying. Naruto sat next to Grover as Zoe was closer to the head as she couldn't hold on with Chakra and at least Grover and Luke were a bit better off. He looked over the city as they flew. He very much wanted this to be over with so he could be with his fiance and soon-to-be wife. He'd just need to contact Hera to get it all sanctioned, or he could contact his grandmother. All depended on what Hestia wanted. He was mused from his thoughts as the eagle swooped down to dodge a lightning bolt as another came their way. He quickly extended his hand to absorb the lightning and spat out blood as the golden energy from before hurt the inside of his body. Land! He yells as the eagle quickly does so. He limps off an eagle as his grandfather healed him. Was that Zeus? I thought you said he wasn't awake yet. Talia says worried as she quickly gets to her father's side. It was Kronos, he manipulated Zeus's domain and used it to try and stop us, his energy is so dark it hurt to absorb, I should be fine but we need to move he says as he groans and falls onto the ground. The poison is still messing with me, go ahead, I'll catch up he says getting a worried look from Talia. She nods and frowns fine but you better hurry she says as they run off. Luke gives him a serious nod as he follows Talia. Naruto groans and spits out golden liquid, Kronos's poison in liquid form. Form. Shouldn't be much longer. That poison is nothing compared to the strength of a primordial Shinju says as Naruto already could feel the poison evading away. He nodded as he felt it going away. He heard a roar of a dragon and crackling of lighting as it whined in pain. He figured Talia handled it but he still didn't like being in this situation. He felt the last of the poison fade away as he pulled himself up and felt the pull of a marker. Must be Zoe's he thinks with a chuckle as he changes to his female hand since Artemis told her a female warrior would come to the marker. With Talia and Ko as Naruto stayed behind. Talia had her blades drawn as she and the others made her way up the mountain. She worried about her father but she knew he'd be fine after a little while. Come on we need to hurry she says as they reach the gateway to the mountain. Zoe frowns when we get in there you need to let me take lead she says with a serious look on her face. Talia was about to say something but Annabeth just held her hand and shook her head making her sigh and nod. Zoe opened the gate and led the group to a golden tree with a large dragon wound around it. Oh well look who returned one of the girls in the garden surrounding the tree. You know he won't let you through, father made especially sure of it another one said with a snide smile that made Zoe glare at them and turn to the group. Walk around the tree, do not get too close. I will keep its attention she says as they agree though Talia was on guard, she felt something bad was going to happen. Zoe inched her way to the sleeping dragon as it rose and stared at her. She silently gave them the signal to go. Layton growled slightly as he saw others passing from the sides. Sage H, it's okay. We aren't here to steal anything we just want a pass to get to Atlas. Don't you remember me? I'd feed you apples and red to you she says as Layton looks at her confused. Zoe th thought it was all okay until Layton lunges at her. She closed her eyes expecting a strike until she felt herself move and Layden cry out in pain as electricity coursed through the air. She opened her eyes to see herself with the rest of the group as Layden pierced Talia with lightning coursing from her until she turned into a large ball of lightning and electrocuting Layden. Come on. We need to go. Talia says as they run up to the old throne room of the Titans. Zoe made her way up but noticed she got sliced on her forearm. She could see the green poison of Layden, she chose to keep it silent as she hid it under her sleeve. 
They arrived at the throne room to see Artemis cut and bruised under the sky. Milady. Zoe yells as she was about to rush off but was blocked by Talia as she pointed to Atlas. The titan smiled and clapped his hands well it seems the party has finally arrived though I am sad the blonde man isn't here he says as he summons his sword and armor. No worries though, not like you all can pose much of a threat to me and my partner here he says pointing to the boy behind him. He had an eye patch over his left eye and black metal armor on himself. He had a sword made of dark metal, bronze and steel. His hair was shaggy and dark black as was his lone eye. He was roughly Annabeth's age, but he gave off an aura that felt much older and very deadly. Ethan, why did you have to go through with it? Luke said as he drew Kozanagi and glared at the boy. Kronos is the greater of the two evils. Yes, the gods can be unjust, but you think a titan would just let us demigods live? He'd kill us and enslave all the mortals. He yells as Kozanagi vibrates in his hand. Ethan glares at him, I don't care Castellan. I am doing what must be done. He yells as he swings down his sword and glares at Atlas. End them, leave Castellan to me, he says as Atlas nods and smiles. Zoe frowns as she pulls out the marker and looks to Artemis. Do it, she says in a hoarse voice. Zoe nods and stabs the marker down. Naruto. Naruto appeared in the female form he normally used for his sexy jutsu but minus the pigtails and with dark red hair in memorial to his mother's mortal form. He had Yamato in his hand as he stared down Atlas and looked to Luke as Kuzanagi vibrated in his hand. Congratulations, Kuzanagi accepted you, now don't lose, he said as Atlas charged at him. He ducked under the strike and landed a strong palm thrust on Atlas Shinra Tensei. He yells as Atlas rockets off into stone pillar. Zoe, I want you to focus on long range. Talia keep him focused with your blades, just keep your lightning armor on and Grover use your vines to try and bind him as much as you can. Annabeth go back up Luke with long range wind jutsus he said as he went to the sky and summoned a strengthened clone to hold the sky. He put three tails worth of Shinju's chakra in the clone to keep it able to withstand it, hopefully. Come on Artemis, let's get this asshole under the sky he said as Artemis shakily got to her feet and drew her daggers. Artemis nodded as Atlas dusted off his armor and glared at them as Talia put on her black lightning armor. Zoe drew her bow and shook away her blurry vision as she notched an arrow. Annabeth went over Luke who was trading blows with Ethan with ease as it seemed Kozanagi had awoken. Naruto told her stories of how the sword was sentient and would help its wielder and even form a telepathic link to them. It seemed Luke was in full sync with it as he was blocking everything with relative ease. She ran through the hand seals and took a deep breath wind style, wind bullets. She yells firing off five wind bullets at Ethan. The half-blind demigod was struck by three of them causing him to crash backwards into a pillar as the other two disarmed him. He glared at her as he dodged strikes from Luke. Naruto, Naruto looked to Artemis, we can't kill him though I know you want him badly, but he needs to bear the weight of the sky. If you can get him close to the clone, I can substitute with him, but with how strong he is it needs to really close he said, getting a nod from Artemis. Follow my lead, I know how to corner a beast, she says as she dashes off with Naruto not far behind. Talia chose to attack long range with Zoe who was acting strange. Lightning style, Black Panther she calls out as a large Black Panther grows from her lightning armor and crashes an atlas, electrocuting him as her father and Artemis hit him strongly towards the sky. He wasn't affected for long as he skidded to a stop and slashed at Naruto. He quickly substituted with a piece of rubble as he appeared behind Atlas with Grover's vines bursting from below him. Atlas quickly tried to dodge but Artemis kneed him upwards as Naruto jumped with him. In memorial of bushy brows he says as chakra chains wrap around him, frontal lotus. He yells as the point downwards and start to spin rapidly as they crash into the ground at an incredibly high speed. The smoke clears and Atlas is shown heavily beaten on the ground as he had open gashes on his arms and legs. Naruto on the other hand was entirely unscathed. Artemis nodded to him as she swept his legs and Naruto kneed him in the face towards the sky. No! I will not go under the sky. He yells as he attacks in a fury of rage. Naruto worked to block the strikes as Zoe fired arrows but all of them missed. 
He ducked under a strike as Artemis went into her full goddess mode and was warping around everywhere. He could see her pushing him further back to the sky. He got ready as Atlas was in range as he made the clone use the rest of its chakra to replace itself with Atlas who got crushed by the weight of the sky. No. Damn you all. I was finally free. He yells as he struggles against the weight. Naruto turned to Luke and Annabeth as Luke ducked under a slice and kicked Ethan off the mountain with a sad look on his face. He went over to Luke and laid his hand on his shoulder, it is okay Luke, I fear he isn't dead, but you did your best to get him to cross over sides he says as Luke nods and Annabeth rubs his back. He looks over to see Talia crouching next to a down Zoe with Artemis next to her. He went over to them. Artemis was crying you have to help her, the poison is too much for me to remove. You have to have something to help her. She pleads with tears falling from her cheeks. Naruto crouched down and placed a hand on her wrist where the poison entered her system. He focused medical chakra in his hand and activated his eyes healing art, yang cleansing, he spoke out as he cleansed her tainted body. She woke up and started spitting out the poison as Artemis hugged her close. Thank you, Naruto. Thank you she says as Zoe looks at him confused. He lowered his hinge and smirked yeah it's me, should have figured when I used some techniques but I don't blame you he said as Zoe glared at him. Stop that Zoe, he removed Layden's poison and saved you. If he was really as vile as you think he would have let you die she says making Zoe look to him and nod. He sighed and sat down as Artemis cared for Zoe and Annabeth, Talia and Grover talked with Luke who has had a worried look on his face. After some time, Artemis stood up, helping Zoe as everyone gathered around her. We need to get to Olympus for the solstice. Just hold your breath she says as she flashes them away. Olympus. Naruto groaned as he arrived in the council chambers. He could see all the Olympians, minus Zeus, in their thrones. He thought it was going to peaceful until thunder boomed and a bandaged up Zeus well looks like the king woke up from his nap he said making Zeus frown and glare at him. Hera cleared her throat before anything happens can we just get on with the meeting? meeting? She says as everyone nods. I am glad that Artemis was able to be saved by the quest group with no casualties but something must be brought up she says looking to Talia who frowned and moved behind her father. She is turning 16 tomorrow and we know she isn't going to be the child of prophecy but she is still dangerous Hera says making Naruto blare. She is not going to be touched Hera. She hasn't done anything wrong. If anything, she has helped you more as she helped save Artemis. He yells as his eyes spin and make Hera flinch. Just leave the boy and his daughter alone for order's sake Poseidon says rolling his eyes at his sister. Just thank them and be done with it so they can go home and relax he says as the others nod. Fine what can we do to thank you, but no it cannot be anything too rewarding she says as Naruto smiles and Talia nods to him. He holds up his hand to show his engagement ring I want Hera's blessing on me and my fiancé's engagement and eventual wedding. And you can never take it away, swear it on sticks he says as he sees Hestia smile happily near the hearth. Hera frowns but nods waving her hand and swearing to the river fine it is done now you all can leave she says as Luke walks up and bows to Poseidon. Lord Poseidon, can you tell me if Ethan died from the fall he says worried as he clenches his hand. Poseidon understands the kid was worried about killing someone. He shakes his head in oh, Ethan is alive. Father protected him from the fall but I feel he is damaged severely. Luke nods, thank you Lord Poseidon, he says as he rejoins the group. Naruto looks to Hestia as she nods and flashes them away only Zoe deciding to stay behind with Artemis as she was still worried about her lieutenant's health. Camp. Naruto. Naruto sighed and immediately went to his cabin, he seriously just wanted to sleep. Luke and Grover waved goodnight to them as they were much more exhausted since neither of them had chakra. Talia and Annabeth followed behind him as Percy walked up. She glared at him but her father put his hand on her shoulder relax, he's all good. He's changed and he is sorry. I would have told you beforehand but we really had no time to do so he says as he opens the cabin to go inside. Percy nodded, I am sorry for being dumb, just I don't really think when I see friends in danger. Your dad is pretty awesome he says, making her chuckle. Yeah, he really is. 
Look I'm sorry for all that but we can talk more later. Rough day you know? She says making him chuckle and nod. Of course, go and rest. Good job on the quest he says before he walks off. She was about to follow her dad and until Annabeth grabbed her hand I I need to talk to you Talia she says with a dark blush and a stutter in effect. Talia nods and follows her to behind Hestia's cabin, unbeknownst to them Naruto was watching them under camouflage jutsu. What is it that you need Annabeth? She asks as she yawns, a bit tired from using black lightning too much. Well I need to tell you something. Something I have been very nervous to do she says as she looks down at her feet. Talia was a bit confused, but nodded sure, go ahead she said with a smile. Over the years of when I thought you were trapped, I realized something. You weren't just my best friend, but someone I had a lot of feelings for. Talia, I love you she says as she leans forward to kiss Talia. Talia's mind went blank as Annabeth's lips crashed against hers. She had feelings for Annabeth, but she never expected Annabeth to kiss her like this. Her mind kicked back on and she kissed Annabeth back and held her close. Annabeth, I love you too, she says making Annabeth smile happily as they kiss again. Again. Naruto smiled happily and Shu shined back into the cabin as he didn't want a flash to ruin their moment. Not to say he didn't take pictures. A couple minutes later, they walked into the cabin sporting huge blushes D dad we are going to bed, see you in the morning. Talia said as they rush into her room. He chuckled as he laid on his bed as he felt Hestia lay next to him and cuddle I'm glad everything went well dear and nice going getting Hera's blessing, she says as she kisses him lovingly. Yes, now we can be together and not worry about anyone getting between us, he says as he kisses down her neck making her shiver and bite her lip. Yes, but not right now. I want it to be special, she says making him nod. Of course, honey, let's just get some sleep for now, he says holding her close. She nodded night dear she says as he fades into sleep. Chapter 10 Naruto chuckled as he ducked under a wave of water Percy stopped trying to control the water, let it flow. He yelled as he ran his hands through the hand seals water style, water bullet he yells firing three globs of water at Percy high speed. Percy skids back from the force of the hits but was unaffected by the water. For the last few weeks Naruto had been training him in using his water abilities. The first bit of advice Naruto gave him was don't control the ocean or water in general, it never goes well. Let it flow through you, move with it and make it strike at the last moment. It was difficult but he was making good progress. Naruto smiled as the water made a whirlpool around him as it moved to constrict him. He quickly substituted with a log and pat Percy on the back. Great job Percy, you are making good progress. I think that's enough for today. I need to get ready as do you he said getting a nod from the boy. I almost forgot it was today Percy said with a chuckle meet at Hestia cabin? He asked as Naruto nodded. Be sure to hurry, I can't be waiting on you or anyone else he said as Percy nodded and ran off. Naruto was incredibly nervous for today as today he was getting married. He was surprised he had been able to focus on training Percy and Luke today. Today. He made his way to Hestia cabin to see Luke chatting with Annabeth and Talia. Over the few weeks he was happy that the boy had lightened up. After a long talk with the boy, he eased his worries. Flashback. Naruto sat in front of Luke in his pocket dimension as Luke asked for privacy. So why are you acting so weird ever since we got back from the quest? He asked making Luke frown. It's nothing he said as he looked away. Luke I can sense negative emotions and you are a variable cocktail of negative emotions. Plus, don't think I haven't noticed how you avoid going into Hestia's cabin he said making Luke frown. I don't feel like I deserve going in there he says in a quiet tone but Naruto heard him clearly. Why do you think that? He asked, confused. Because I could have been Ethan. He yells, I could have betrayed my friends, and by the luck of chaos I was saved. He said as tears threatened to break out. I was about to go through with it the next day, but you found me before that and saved me, he looked to Naruto. At times I still felt dark, to think I almost went through with it. I don't feel like I'm allowed to enter such a pure cabin, he said as Naruto put his hand on his back. 
Luke, you remind me of how my ex-friend Sasuke. But the difference between you and him is that you changed and stayed in the light without anyone having to beat the crap out of you to do so he said making Luke chuckle and wipe his eyes. You have done nothing but stayed in the light. You have grown so well and stayed strong he said as his circle mark glowed. Hestia can sense the light in you that outweighs the dark and so can I he said as he placed the mark on Luke's back. Sage art, gift of a pathway he said as Luke was enshrouded in a light blue aura. You deserve this Luke, and I know you will do good with this. Luke looked to him in shock, but all he could do was nod and smile. Flash, flashback end. Over the weeks he trained Luke in his elemental affinities. His were unique, earth and yang. He figured that earth was from Hermes as Hermes was the patron saint of travelers. Yang was surprising since he's never seen anyone with the natural ability to separate yang from chakra without any thought about it. Luke could use Yang Chakra to strengthen his body and enhance his strength to near levels of himself when he was in sage mode. He also could mix the two to make a land sub-element. It was similar to sand release which was like magnet but only with moving sand and nothing else like golden dust or iron sand. With land release he could move chunks of earth as a shield. And, imagine a piece of earth moving around him like a moon orbiting the earth but can be used with many pieces and moved around at will plus, a bit of earth bending. It was an interesting release in his opinion. Also, his daughter and Annabeth were an adorable couple in his mind. He would occasionally catch them kissing when they thought they were alone but he let them keep thinking it was a hidden relationship. He smiled to the kids you guys all ready? We need to leave soon he said as they nodded. We'll go change, be ready in like five minutes Talia says as she and Annabeth go change inside the cabin. Luke chuckles and heads over to his cabin to change. He sighed and chuckled. He had his outfit all sealed away so all he had to do was wait and open the portal. He smiled at Zetsu when his sleeve ready brother? He asks as Zetsu smirks. Of course, I know mom is excited for this day he says as he connects with Naruto to help him open the portal back to the elemental nations. Never thought we'd be returning so soon Zetsu says as he chuckles. Chuckles. Naruto nods while I never expected to get married either so surprises everywhere. Now let's get this thing open he says as Zetsu crawls over half of face and activates the Shinju's eyes. Kamui they say is a black portal reminiscent of the ones his mother used in their fight appears. There, it'll stay up as long as you keep your eyes active Zetsu says as he slides back into Naruto's sleeve. He patiently waited for the kids as slowly Percy, Luke, Annabeth and Talia all showed up. The guys were dressed in tuxedos and girls in dresses, even if Talia hated being in a dress. He smiled at them well, everyone ready to go visit my home? He asked as he placed a hinge on himself. He changed his appearance to alter his skin tone, hide his whisker marks and make his hair turn light brown. He also made his eyes grayer since his blue was a dead giveaway to anyone who knew him. Talia nodded hell yeah. Can't wait to see grandma and great grandma she says as the others looked confused. I'll explain more later but we really need to get going he says as they nod and walk through the portal. Once everyone was in, he smiled and stepped through the portal. He may have been betrayed by the village but he still considered it home in a sense. Elemental Nations Tsunade was tapping her foot impatiently waiting for Naruto to arrive. Relax Tsunade-sama, he wouldn't dare be late. If anything he is getting all the kids, he said he was bringing ready Shizen says with a calm smile. Garen nodded knowing Naruto he will be here soon. He isn't one to keep others waiting unlike Hataki he said as he sipped some tea. Tsunade sighs as a portal appears in the room as she slams down her saucer finally. The brat was starting to cut it close she says as four kids walk into the room. She stares at them blankly who the hell are all of you? She says as the one with black hair looked around. I'm Talia Atsutsuki, daughter of Naruto, she says making the people in the room smile as they looked her as a man came through the portal. Now Talia, Talia I wanted to tell them that, he says with a smile. Sorry dad, I couldn't help it, she says as the man ruffles her hair. Naruto? Gara says as he looks the man over. Yup, just hidden under henge, he says, flashing his Shinju eyes. 
Who are the little ones? She asks as she stares at them confused as to why he brought young kids. Well, you all know Talia, my daughter, and these are her friends Percy, Luke and Annabeth. Hestia likes them and invited them along. Talia and Annabeth are bridesmaids of hers while Luke and Percy are groomsmen for me he says the kids smile to the new people. Well, that's good but shouldn't you get around to bringing your mom and grandmother here? Tsunade says as pours out two more saucers. Right he says as he smiles to the kids, first I need all of you to swear not to reveal what you are about to see to anyone other than who is attending this wedding, he says as they nod and swear on sticks. Okay good now I guess you all know of different pantheons, even if Zeus tries to hide them, he says as he pulls out Kokinjo, the golden canopy rope from a seal as he laid it in a circle on the ground. Annabeth nods yes, the other pantheons are out there but they stay out of America, she says watching Naruto curiously. Well, that is somewhat true, but mostly because they aren't in your realm and neither are we. We are in my home realm, the realm of the Shintos my real ancestors he says as he runs through the seals and slams his hands on Kokinjo. Opening art, entrance to heaven he says as the rope raises from the ground to make a gateway as two women walk through it. The kid, kids, minus Talia were speechless at the two women. One had long ankle-length white hair with pale white eyes wearing a white Japanese gown. She had long horns on her head and what seemed to be a vertical slit on her forehead. She gave off the aura of someone incredibly powerful and wise. The other one was much more so. She had long black hair and dark red eyes. She too had a red Japanese gown that had black trimmings. She gave off the aura of a leader and someone you didn't want to anger but still someone kind. Everyone, say hello to Kagaya Atsutsuki, the Shinto rabbit goddess my mother and Amaterasu, the head matriarch of the Shinto pantheon as well as my grandmother he says, motioning to the two so they would know who was who as the demigods, again minus Talia, stare in shock. They were speechless as the black-haired one tackled Naruto my darling grandchild. I am so excited for today. She squeals as she buries his face in her chest again making Percy and Luke blush a bit. Mom please stop suffocating him. He can't give me more grandchildren if you suffocate him Kagaya says pulling her mom off her son with a smile. Amaterasu pouts but straightens her kimono fine she turns to the demigods. Welcome children of Greece to my realm. Normally I would never allow any demigods or actual gods and goddess from the Greco pantheon in here but after making them swear and once you all swear never to mention this to Zeus or anyone else, we can begin this she says flashing them a smile that made them shiver and quickly swear on sticks. Grandma please don't scare the kids, Naruto says as his mom pats his back. Naruto, I'm a bit confused Luke says as he looks to Naruto. So, you aren't a child of chaos? He asks. Naruto nods nope, I am the son of Kagaya and grandson of Amaterasu and the only Shinto primordial Shinju but we can do all the revealing stuff later. We need to summon the guests he says as his grandmother smiles to him. Yes she clears her throat as the matriarch of the Shintos I allow the Greeks to enter my realm, but only the ones who have sworn my oath she says as the Kokinjo blows again, creating another gateway. First one in was Ares as he looked around and smiled never would have guessed you were a Shinto kid he says looking at Naruto, he still had his Shinju eyes active. Not that I have anything against them, they are a good breed of warriors he says as Artemis walks in. Oh, the nature is so pure here. Congratulations on keeping it this way Lady Amaterasu she says as she flashes Naruto a quick smile before going back to her semi-serious face. Next walks in Poseidon who makes Percy smile whom I can't wait until you are revealed Naruto, then I can brag to my brother that I got to visit the Shinto's realm he takes a deep breath I have got to say the sea here feels cleaner than mine. I definitely need to talk to your sea god he says as he smiles and walks over to Percy. After the sea god walks in Athena who was inspecting everything around her. It really is too bad we cannot speak of this realm until the boy reveals himself, she says as she looks around. Amaterasu smiles feel free to visit the collective library, just remember your oath, she says as the goddess of wisdom nods and gets a small smile as she stands near her daughter. The next man was someone Naruto quite liked. Hermes the god of messengers. He looked around. And let out an impressed whistle nice place you got here. Very clean and pure. No real monsters here he says as he smiles to Naruto and walks over to a nervous looking Luke. It's okay son, I would like to talk with you more. 
Get to know you better he says with a caring smile. Luke looks to Naruto worried but Naruto just smiles and nods. Luke turns to his dad and smiles I'd like that he said as Hermie smiles and nodded before resting a hand on Luke's shoulder. The next person was someone Naruto respected. Hades the god of death. Hades smiled to him as he looked around him not much death I like, I like it. Thank you for inviting me Naruto he says with a genuine smile. Naruto smiles and nods of course Hades, I wasn't going to forget you. Especially after you were very helpful after that quest he says as Ares grumbles. The war god was still sour about being controlled. Shortly after Hades had his friendly moment Demeter walked in with a smile. Oh, I definitely like this place better. If only our realm was this pure she says with a small frown before looking to Hades. You didn't bring my daughter? She asks confused and a bit upset. He shook his head she didn't feel like coming even when I mentioned you would be there. I think she just wants to relax a bit he says as the gateway glows again. As the next person walks in and Naruto's eyes were covered. You can't see the bride on her wedding day he hears his mother say as he can also hear Hestia giggle. Don't worry it won't be long dear she says as she squeezes his hand. He squeezes back I know I'm looking forward to seeing how beautiful you are in a wedding dress he says making her blush. Who knew you could blush so red sister Demeter says with a smile. Don't worry Naruto Athena and I as well as the bridesmaids will go around town to get her ready. We will see you at the ceremony she says as he hears them walk out of the room. Only ones left are the gods, male demigods and Artemis. Artemis looked to Amaterasu may I bring my hunters here? She asks respectfully to the powerful goddess that easily equaled a Greek primordial not counting chaos. Amaterasu nods make them swear the same oath I made you take and we are fine. You can hunt as you like but do not venture past the main forest surrounding the village she says as Artemis bows and walks out. We are go going to help the others his mother says as she pays his cheek. Have fun around the village. Come on Tsunade and Shizun his grandmother says as she smiles and waves them off. Naruto looks around at the gods and demigods left behind. Will do you all want to visit my old home? He asks as they nod. And after I want a rematch. No powers just plain swordsmanship Ares says with a large grin. Naruto chuckles sure thing Ares just make sure not to show any powers as well as don't call me Naruto. I'm kinda wanted here for taking chakra away he says running the back of his neck sheepishly. Understandable. If others had the powers you had I wouldn't want them spreading around either Poseidon says as he pats his son on the back. I'm going to spend time with Percy as I guess Hermes is doing with his son he says as Hermes nods. So, it is just us three he says as Hades and Ares nod. Well let's go sightseeing he says to them as they smile and nod after following behind him. They travel around the village and he showed them all the different sectors. Hmm very interesting. I'm surprised they can all work together but without this chakra thing it's not surprising Ares says as he strokes his chin. He may be a war god but he had to know peace to know war. Hades nodded I bet your death god had his hands full with the recent war he said as he could feel the aura of death off in the distance in large amounts. Naruto nodded yeah it was a tough war but it was all caused by two madmen that made everything go downhill. Kinda don't want to talk about it he said with a frown as the others let it go. Moments later they arrived at the training grounds and Ares summons an impressive looking sword. It was a great sword with a glowing red blade that quickly hit itself to a reddish metal. Well ready now? He asks as Hades chuckles and sits down to watch. Naruto nods and unseals Yamato and smiles at Ares definitely ready. What are the rules? He asks with a smirk. No powers and no strange eyes. No killing blows, we stop once the other is incapacitated he said as he stabbed his sword in the ground. Let's get this started, Hades will be the ref he says as Hades nods and sits back. Well let's get this started Naruto says as Ares pulls his sword out and charges at him with surprising speed considering Ares' size. Naruto ducks under a slice and slashes at Ares only for him to block with the large sword. It seemed while under the control of Kronos the war god's abilities were hindered and weakened. 
Naruto leaned back to dodge a knee as he cartwheeled back and landed a strong hit on Ares's jaw sending him stumbling back a bit. Ares wiped his mouth with the back of his hand and smiled oh you are definitely good boy he says as he charges again. They both evaded the other's strikes, unknown they had gained a crowd of onlookers. Naruto smiled as he blocked Ares' strike and spun a kick, landing it on Ares' side making him groan and send him skidding back with a strong hit with the great sword. Glad to see that you're actually a good swordsman and not just a rage-induced fighter Naruto says as he feels a broken bone in him arm men together. Ares smirked you think after years of war I'd be that weak? Your words hurt he says as he charges again. Naruto sees an opportunity like he did with Pallas. He ran and slid under Ares' strike and between the god's legs and quickly got up the second he was behind Ares. Using all of his natural strength he landed a strong hit on the war god's side sending him crashing forward into multiple trees. A bit later laughter could be heard as Ares got up, seemingly unscathed except for his clothes that were ripped her and there. That has to be the strongest hit I've felt from someone not my kind he says with a smirk as he dusted off his clothes. Hades stands up, up from his seat as much as I believe you two would like to continue, I doubt Hestia or any of the girls would like the groom being injured or even you Ares he says as they frown but nod. We will finish another time Ares says with a frown. And just when it was getting good. Naruto nods sounds like a plan, we still do need to meet up with everyone else he says with a frown. Hades waves it away I already sent them messages to meet us at our area. Demeter told me where to go he says showing them a leaf that had Greek writing on it. Naruto nods and sheathes Yamato and looks around with a frown. He could see Sasuke watching and glaring at him and Ares as he walked forward. You, man with the sword. Who are you? He asked making Ares raise an eyebrow at it. He knew they weren't in the Greek realm, but being this blunt with anyone was quite rude. I'm visit the village for the wedding of my aunt, he says as he stabs his sword in the ground again. My name is none of your concern, he says as Sasuke glares at him. Maybe you can get the honor of training me. I haven't seen swordsmen that talented Sasuke said with a snide smile. Ares frowned and picked up his sword he shook his head and here I though father was full of himself and cocky he thought as he ignored the man and made his way over to Hades. Come on let's go. I fear what Hestia would do if we were late he said with a shiver. He may not fear most of the Olympians but he was wary around Hestia. At times she could give off an aura stronger than his father's. Hades chuckled and nodded as Naruto made his way over, hiding the glare. Come on we three still need to get ready, he said as Sasuke glared at them. Stop. I am talking to you Sasuke yells in anger. Ares, Ares lowers his sunglasses and glares at Sasuke yes and I am choosing not to listen to you otherwise I'd break your bones and twist you into a pretzel, he says making Sasuke shiver in fear from the war god's aura. Hades shook his head come on nephew, we need to go. Now he says as Ares waves it off and follows. Naruto chuckled at Ares's threat and just followed along. So, why the all the hate towards that boy? Hades asks as they made their way to the meeting area. Ares also noticed it, but didn't comment on it. Naruto sighed, he used to be my friend. That was till he betrayed the village. Eventually, he came back to defeat the madman in the war. After everything was done, he called for a revolution. We fought in the Valley of End and we both lost an arm. But strangely enough he was still able to place me under an illusion. He trapped me away for three years until I was able to break out with the help of my grandfather he said as the two gods frowned. Well, I'm surprised you didn't kill the boy afterwards. And if he called for a revolution, how is he not banished? Ares said confused. I'm not one to kill. Even after all he did, he was my first real friend so I could never bring myself to do it. And as for the why is he here thing, I'm guessing that after he returned her to try and recapture me the other Kagis saw no reason to really keep him banished as he is isn't dangerous anymore he said in a tired tone. The two gods decided to drop it as they kept walking. They eventually made it to the meeting point with time to spare. They were getting married in the ruins of Yuzushiogakure, the same place his mother and father were married at. They just had to meet up at the Kage building so they could warp over to the ruins. 
He saw Poseidon, Percy, Hermes and Luke waiting on the roof of the building. He also noticed Artemis and her hunters were also there. Good, you guys aren't late Poseidon says as he looks at them. Where are your tuxes? He asks as everyone else was all dressed up, even the hunters and Artemis. Ares groans and snaps his fingers changing Hades's, Naruto's and his outfits. Everyone, everyone looked at him confused. Being in a relationship with Aphrodite comes with a minor blessing of beauty so yes I can change clothes easier he says everyone nods in understanding. Well, we were told you'd get us there Hermes says as he looks to Naruto. Naruto sighed as he activated his eyes Zetsu a little help making a pathway to mom he said as the black blob in his sleeve nodded. Kamui he says as a large portal appeared revealing the ruins of Yuzushi Ogakure. Well go on through. I need to be through last also make sure I don't see Hestia in her dress he said as they nod and one by one walk through. He looks back to the village and sighs. From what he saw today he was glad he took away Chakra from these lands. It seemed even more peaceful than before. Artemis came back through the portal it's all clear Naruto. Come on she said snapping him out of his thoughts. He smiled to her thanks he said as she went back through with him not too far behind. Yuzushi Ogokure. Naruto undid he henge and smiled at the clearing that his mother got married at. It was a circular clearing surrounded by cherry blossoms and full of flowers with a clear path down the middle leading to a large tori gate. There were chairs on either side of the pathway and he saw some familiar faces that he almost didn't believe. There, in a more spirituous form was Haku, Zabuza, the third Hokage, Jiraiya, Nagato and his father. They all smiled to him and waved him over. He was in shock until he saw the Shinigami behind them. Relax grandson of Amaterasu, your grandmother and mother convinced me to let them visit for the wedding. Consider it my wedding gift to you he says as he floats away. Naruto let out a breath of relief as he smiled to the spirits it's nice to see you all he says as they smile. Haku smiles at him, it is nice to see you Naruto, you have grown so much from the short boy that I met in the forest he said with a smile as Zabuza smirked. Heard you are wielding my blade boy. Hope you do it honor and use it to protect instead of kill he says as he ruffles Naruto's hair. I saw the lady you're marrying. She is definitely a beauty and a goddess. Such a lucky guy he said making Naruto blush. Hiruzen smiled I hear you fought in a war against Madara and were a major component in defeating him he says as he rubs Naruto's arm. I am also sorry for the actions of the villagers, abandoning you again afterwards. Please do not hold it against them he says as Naruto shakes his head. Don't worry Gigi, I've never been on to hold grudges. I am helping others now and I even adopted a girl. She's just as spunky as me he said making Hiruzen chuckle and smile. I'm glad you saved someone he said as he moved off to let Jiraiya talk. Gaki. I hear you republished my works. Are you finally on my side? The side of the super perverts. He said only to get hit with a sake bottle most likely from Tsunade. Stop trying to turn Naruto into a pervert. He hears Tsunade yell from across the clearing where Hestia was most likely at. It was blocked by wooden tendrils but he could see Tsunade standing guard with a glare on her face directed at Jiraiya. Naruto sighs I only republished them to have some money to raise to Leah he said as Jiraiya got up and frowned. Jeez kid. So disappointing, you could learn from them especially considering your honeymoon is going to start soon he says with a big grin only, only to have his shoulder crushed by his mother. Stop trying to dirty my sons mind you pervert. Or else I'll have to shove you back in the Shinigami's gut she says with a dark aura making the toad sage shut up and nod vigorously. He smiles to his mom thank you cousin he says as she smiles and pats his cheek before smiling at his dad. His dad was about to speak up until she held up a finger to his lips later Minato, I need to help with our son's wedding she says as he smiles and nods. Jiraiya, deciding to be silent moved away as Nagato walked up. He was no longer skin and bones but he still had the rinnegan and his red hair was lighter. He looked healthy and happy. He was still dressed in his Akatsuki cloak but it no longer was a symbol of what it became in the end, more of a symbol of what it originally was. You went through with your word Naruto. 
I knew I was right to place my faith in you he says with a smile as he looked around. I can feel the pain in the world has lowered and the world is truly at peace. True you took away chakra but you did what no one has done before. Ended the cycle of hatred in this war-torn land he said as Naruto smiled. I never go back on my word Nagato. I'm glad I was able to convince you in the end. How has the afterlife been? He asked as Nagato chuckled. It is peaceful. I am with Conan and Yahiko. Though I am happy to see you wedding day. Not many shinobis of my time ever got to retire and marry. I'm glad you finally are able to he says as he looks to Minato. I'll leave you to talk with your dad he says as he pats Naruto on the back and walks off to sit next to the other spirits. Minato smiled at his son I am so glad you were able to return your mother back to original self he says as he smiles off to Kagaya who smiled back. Naruto nodded why didn't you say anything when she appeared? He asked as Minato frowned. Because she wouldn't have wanted that. I hoped she'd snap out of it and if not then I knew her mother would fix her and she'd find you he said as he ran his hand through his hair. I really am proud of you son he said with, with a smile. Naruto smiled brightly and hugged his dad as Minato smiled and hugged his son back. As much as I would love to keep talking with you, I believe you need to be with your groomsmen and get everything ready Minato said as Naruto nodded. I'll talk to you all later he said with a smile as he bounded off to his groomsmen. Zabuza shook his head I'm glad the boy is happy. He deserves it he says as everyone nods with a smile. Naruto ran up to his groomsmen with a smile. Everyone ready? Hades do you have the rings? He asks. Hades nods and takes out the two rings I had to use help from a friend named after a planet to make them but they are all good and no weird curse or anything. I checked he said hinting that he had to turn Roman to use his control over gemstones and precious metals to gather to components. Naruto smiles thanks again. Just hold on to them until I need them he says as Hades slips them back in his tuxedo. Naruto looked in a mirror as he straightened his tuxedo. It was a classy tuxedo with a lavender sash around his waist since it was one of Hestia's colors. Pinned to his jacket was a detura of the breed angel's trumpet. The outside was purple with white near the bottom as the inside was completely white with light purple around the bottom of the inside. He smiled to his groomsmen, how do I look? He asked as they looked him over. You look great kid. But just remember, you hurt Hestia. We hurt you Poseidon said as the others nodded and glared at him making him shiver. He nodded I would never hurt her. I love her with everything I have and I would never dare hurt someone precious to me he said making the god smile. You nervous any? Hermes asks as he stands next to Luke who had a genuine smile on his face. A little bit. I just hope it all goes good he says as he straightens the flower on his his jacket. Relax, with multiple Shinto gods and goddess as well as some Greek ones nothing could happen. Hell Amaterasu is as strong as a Greek primordial if the legends are true. Nothing can possibly happen today Ares says in a surprisingly understanding tone. Everyone looks at him confused what? I can't be nice? He said making them chuckle. He smiles as his mother walks in and smiles at him oh Sochi you look so handsome, she says as she strokes his cheek. She turns to the groomsman it is almost time for it to start, you should all head out. I just want a short moment with my son she said as they all nodded and left the area to head to the gate. He turned to his mom and smiled I'm glad you were able to make it he said as she smiled. She smiled and hugged him it is every mother's dream to see her child off on their wedding day and I am no exception my Sochi she says as she pats down his hair as best as she could. He smiles as he puts her hands to her side well we better go get all set up he says as she smiles and lead him to the altar under the Tory gate. The groomsmen and bridesmaids were except for Hades. He smiled to the crowd as he noticed the priest in a sense. It wasn't anyone he knew but if he was here it meant his grandmother trusted him. He had short black hair and kind green eyes that gave off the same feeling as Itachi did during the war. It is a pleasure to meet you, Lord Naruto. I am Gekko, the Shinto god of love and marriage and I am honored to be the one wedding you and your wife together he says with a bow. 
Naruto was about to tell him not to call in Lord, but the look from his mother told him not to well, I'm thankful that you are here. I'm sure you will do a great job he says, making the Shinto god smile. Short shortly after the music started, and he turned to see Hades leading Hestia down the aisle. He stared at her and lost his breath. She was gorgeous. She wore a strapless cream-colored gown that cascaded off her and trailed behind her. It accented her bust and complexion. It had cinnamon-colored vines trailing from the bottom up to right around her waist. I he hands was a bouquet of a collection of her sacred flowers. She had a veil over her face, but from what he could see, she seemed to have bare amounts of makeup on. For as long as he had been with Hestia, she never wore makeup. She had a very natural beauty that had no need for makeup. The most he had ever seen her use was lip gloss. Now she had light eye shadow and very minimal lipstick. She was beautiful in his mind with or without makeup and this only proved to make his point. He nodded to Hades as he smirked and led Hestia to him. Gekko smiled and turned to Hades, do you give her away? He asks. Hades nods as her eldest brother I do give her away to be wed he says as he kisses Hestia's hand and went over to join the other groomsmen. Gekko cleared his throat we are gathered here today to wed together Naruto Atsutsuki and Hestia together in immortal matrimony. With the access in my domain, I can feel a large amount of love between these two and it is incredibly pure and I am sure I speak for everyone that we are all happy that they found each other he says as Naruto holds Hestia's hand. They will now exchange their vows, I believe the groom is going first he says as Naruto nods. He clears his throat and brings out a piece of paper. He unfolds it and smiles at Hestia as he reads it off. Hestia, throughout my life I never really got much love. As time went by it somewhat got better, but not really. For the longest time I seriously thought I was going to be alone for my whole life and never have someone to love he said, making Kagaya frown a bit. But then I found you and you changed that. I fell in love at first sight and every day we were together made my hopes of being with someone and loving someone more and more strong. When I proposed and you said yes, yes it was one of the happiest days in my life and hopefully one of many more to come in the future he says as he smiles at her. Hestia, goddess of the hearth and home. I love you with my mortal and future immortal life. I will always be here for you and I hope to build a large happy family with you he says as she wipes some tears away and smiles at him. That was beautiful Naruto, she says as she looks him in the eyes. Through my immortal life I had been yearned after by numerous men that never got my interest. I had no interest in any men so I swore celibacy to never give up my maidenhood. That was until I found you. I felt a strong familiar pull with you when you were raising and looking after young Talia she says as she smiles to a slightly blushing Talia. I grew closer with you as you were my champion and after the master bolt, I confessed my feelings. I was afraid you'd turn me down. I never had any experience with relationships but you were in the same boat and we grew together. To a point where I can't see my life without you in it she says as she wipes another tear. I love you Naruto Atsutsuki with all of my immortal life. You are the only one I want to spend my life with she says as many people in the audience wipe some tears as do the groomsmen and bridesmaids. Gekko smiles I doubt anyone here could doubt their love for one another so I will get straight to it his hands glow as a red silken cord appears around their feet. First may we have the rings? He asks as Hades nods and takes out Naruto's ring to give Hestia as Artemis takes out the one for Hestia to give Naruto. Gekko smiled at the rings and turned to the two of them, do you Hestia take Naruto as your immortal husband for all of your life? He asks as she nods. Of course, I do she says as one end of the cord ties itself around her right ank ankle as Naruto slips on her ring. It was a dazzling bronze band with a cream-colored diamond and smaller bronze diamonds around the band. Gekko turns to Naruto with a smile, do you Naruto take Hestia to be your wife for all of your mortal and eventual immortal life? He asks as Naruto squeezes Hestia's hand. Yes, yes I do he says as the other end of the cord ties around his left ankle as Hestia slides his ring on. It was a dazzling brown that reminded her of oak and it had vine designs on it with hinds of green gems on the vine and even a small pink diamond on it to resemble a peach. By the power in me as the Shinto god of marriage I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. 
He says with a smile as the cord glows and leaves behind two red rope tattoos on their ankles where the cord was tied. Naruto flips up her veil and pulls her close, kissing her gently before she deepens it. All the while they are kissing the crowd was applauding. Poseidon had a happy smile on his face as he saw his sister smile happily while in the arms of Naruto. She truly looks happy doesn't she brother? Hades says as he watched their sister look truly happy for the first time in far too long. Poseidon nods I haven't seen her like this since back when father was defeated and everything was peaceful before the giants woke up he said as the other's gods nodded and frowned. Luckily, the demigods were all over near Hestia. Artemis smiles at her aunt's happiness as Zoe pouted. He doesn't deserve to dirty Lady Hestia Zoe says making Artemis frown. Zoe, Hestia is happy and you really need to let go of your feelings towards Naruto. He saved not only me but you. And he didn't have to save you. Be happy she says as Zoe pouts but nods. Now come on, I want to congratulate congratulate my aunt she says as zoe follows behind her the other hunters came up from the audience as she could only get zoe as a bridesmaid everyone slowly made their way to the reception that was set up behind the tori gate that naruto and hestia passed under as everyone else went around immediately after she was bombarded by hugs from amaterasu welcome to the family hestia i expect many more great grandchildren I love Talia, but I want little babies to nuzzle she says making Hestia blush darkly at the thought of making babies. Kagaya pulled her mother of her daughter-in-law please don't embarrass her too much. She still needs to cut the cake and dance with Naruto she says as Amaterasu pouts. You never let me hug people she says as she sulks away making Kagaya roll her eyes at her mother. Come on Hestia, enjoy your precious day she says as Hestia nods and smiles before leaving to catch up with Naruto. He was surrounded by her siblings and nephews. They smiled at her, so how does it feel to be married? Ares asked with a smirk as he loosened the tie around his neck. It feels wonderful Ares, she says as she rubs the ring on her finger. It was the most beautiful ring she had ever seen. Ares smiled at his aunt and nodded as he went off to go eat some of the food. I am going to go socialize with my son Hestia, have fun at your wedding Poseidon says as he rubs his sister's back and smiles as she nods to him. Hermes gave her a thumbs up as she figured he was off to do the same. Hades shook his head at his relatives oh don't worry Hades, they rarely get any time to see their kids. Let them have their moment. I'm just happy they were able to make it she said as Artemis came up to hug her. You look lovely Aunt Hestia and your ring looks very pretty, she says as Hestia smiles. Thank you, niece, you look very beautiful in the dress, she says as Artemis blushes, making her chuckle. Go and enjoy the food, Naruto cooked it all and I have got to say he is a great chef, almost as good as me, she says as Artemis drools a bit and makes her way to the buffet making her and numerous hunters chuckle as they followed her. She smiled at Naruto who was talking with his dad, I'm sorry to interrupt this moment, but I do believe it is our time to dance, she said as the spirit nodded. I am very sorry for taking him away from you, Hestia Minato says as he pat Naruto on the back. Enjoy yourself son, I am going to speak with your mother for a bit, he says as Naruto smiles. Naruto smiled at Hestia and held her hands, I am so happy to finally be your husband, he says as he kisses her hand. She giggles and nods I'm the same, I can't be any more happy that I am your wife, she says as music starts to play. Will you give me this dance, as my wife? He asks as she smiled and nodded. Of course, my love, she says as she enjoys the moment. The party goes along wonderfully. The dance was enchanting, the cake was delicious even after they shoved a piece in the other's face. The gifts didn't really matter to them, but they were thankful. Ares got Naruto a sword and Hestia a pet baby Aramanthian boar that she fell in love with quickly. Poseidon got Naruto a trident and Hestia a baby dolphin that she begged Naruto to build a lake behind their house for her. It went without saying that he agreed. Hades gave them both a baby two-headed hellhound that was an adorable little thing. It even had the ability to split apart much like Nagato's old summon was able to do. He got the feeling Hestia loved animals. He didn't mind the animals, as a sage he cherished life and he could feel how pure the creatures were and he knew Hestia, along with himself, would care for them. Hermes, 
Hermes gave Naruto a pair of winged sandals and Hestia an unlimited free order for a clothing site. She appreciated it since she liked the occasional break from using her powers, it was the same with cooking. She liked to cook for herself more than she used her blessing and Naruto was the same. Artemis gave Naruto a bow and quiver that would refill on its own. She also got a silver wolf for Hestia that took an immediate shine to her. Athena had given him an ancient book of Greek monsters and heroes. It was a sweet gift from the goddess of wisdom. He chuckled as the party went on. This was one of the happiest days he has had in a long time. He looked over to see his new wife petting all the new animals she got, even the dolphin. He was truly thankful for everything that had happened since he found out who his mother was. He looked around to see Talia dancing with Percy as Annabeth danced with Luke. Artemis was having fun with her hunters as the Greek gods conversed civilly with the, the Shinto gods, even Ares to his surprise. He smiled as his mom and grandmother came up to him and hugged him. His dad and the other spirits had to leave an hour or so ago as they reached the limit of how long they could be outside the death realm. Sochi I am so happy that you found love, she says as she hugs him. Amaterasu smiled as well you are the first child of Kagaya's that I think of as a child of mine. Hagoromo and Hamura betrayed Kagaya and my husband for power. You trusted Shinju after one meeting, even after you fought his uncontrolled self in the war. That is why you are my grandchild as well as Shinju she says with a smile. It made sense. He never saw any children of Athena being claimed as grandchildren of Zeus. He was special if his grandparents were actually cl claiming him and giving him their blessing. I would like to give you this Amaterasu says as she hands him a peach that had the design of Shinju's eye on it. It is the equivalent of a golden apple from Hera's garden. It will grant you godhood, but I want you to wait until Shinju tells you to eat it she says as he nods and seals it away before hugging her close to him. Thank you Obachan he says as she smiles and hugs him back. Now go and enjoy your soon to start honeymoon. We can take care of transporting everyone back and taking care of your animals until you get back. Though I expect her to be pregnant by the time you get back she says with a smirk as he blushes dark and Naruto stutters. Mom please leave him alone Kagaya says before turning to him. Though I wouldn't object to more grandchildren she says as he blushes even darker before running off. He gets to Hestia as she smiles up at him, they are all so cute, she says as she pets the little animals. Do you have any names for them? Only fair if you name them she says as she scratches the boar under his chin. Naruto sits down and picks up the boar and looks it over before setting him down well for this little guy since he has a connection to the nature god Pan how about your zen, it means nature he says as the little boar squeals and runs around him happily. He likes it she says as she sees the little boar nuzzle against her husband. He smiles at the twin-headed hellhound that resembled a Rottweiler pup as it splits apart and runs all over him. One of the hounds had a small brown diamond on its head as the other had a crescent moon on its head. They seemed to like to play rough with one another but was careful around the boar and wolf. How about Jigaku for the diamond-headed one and Ryakin for the crescent-headed one? Means hell and hound essentially he says as they yip around him and reconnect before lay laying on his lap. He watches as the small wolf approaches him, somewhat cautiously, well aren't you a nervous one, he says as he picks it up making it whine a little bit before he pets it softly making it nuzzle in his arms for you I am thinking Mamoru, means protect which I know you will be doing a lot of when the little ones arrive, he said as he whispered the reasoning being the name as he didn't want Hestia to get flustered. He passed the sleeping wolf over to Hestia as a spurt of water splashed him in the face making him chuckle. He smiled down at the dolphin that was squeaking and swimming around quickly. Such a little troublemaker, aren't you? He said making the dolphin nod its head. Well, I doubt you want to be named anything like clownfish so how about Shimizu, stands for clear water he says as the dolphin does a little flip and chatters around the little pond. He turned to Hestia, how were those names? He asks as she smiled and nodded. They were great. Is your mom and grandma going to look after them until we return from our H honeymoon? She asks as she blushes at the thought of going on a honeymoon. He nodded and chuckled to Leah I going to love playing with these little guys he says as he helps her up. Hestia smiles as she sees a limo appear at the end of the clearing I guess that's our ride she says with a blush. 
He nods and holds her hand, I guess it is, he says as Talia and the other demigods come up to say bye as his mom and grandmother walk up as well. Talia hugs her dad have fun on your honeymoon dad. I want siblings she says making Hestia stutter and blush. Annabeth smacks her arm with a light blush, don't embarrass Lady Hestia, I think she's been embarrassed enough for today she says as Luke chuckles. Just enjoy yourself, I can look after everyone until you get back Luke says as he gives Naruto a thumbs up. Percy groans it's gonna be boring without you there to train up, but I'll keep on my training. Have fun, you deserve it Naruto he says as the gods come, come up as well. You better take good care of Hestia. I don't want to come after you Hades says with Poseidon nodding in approval the Hades is semi-threat. Brothers, please. Naruto is someone I trust with everything and I love him. If I didn't do you think I would have married him? She asks making them grumble. Ares chuckles got them there he says with a smirk before patting Naruto on the back and slipping in some Viagra in Naruto's pocket making him heat up. Come on guys, I think our time is up as well Hermes says as Amaterasu nods before opening a portal. Artemis and Athena, who were conversing with their hunters and watching over her daughter, respectively, rejoin the group. Athena had been somewhat avoiding them, most likely because she wanted to learn more of the Shinto gods and goddesses. Remember your vow and speak nothing of it until the time Naruto reveals himself Amaterasu says as she smiles to them, not in a threatening way. They nod and say their goodbyes as Naruto and Hestia pile into the limo. He holds her close and kisses her gently, I love you Hestia, you made me the happiest man alive today he says making her giggle. I love you too Naruto, so very much. I haven't been this happy in a long time. Thank you for coming into my life she says as she leans against him and the limo disappears. Chapter 11 Naruto smiled as he and his wife arrived at their honeymoon destination. It was a large cottage out in the land of iron. His grandmother had set it up so no one could bother them and she made sure it wasn't freezing cold in the cabin since it was close to the islands of snow country. He carried Hestia in a bridal style as he made his way into the cottage. He leaned down and kissed Hestia lovingly as she returned the kiss. You sure that you're ready for this? He asked as he laid her down on the large king-sized king mattress. She nodded and stroked his cheek Naruto, I love you and I want nothing more than to start a loving huge family with you she said as she snapped her fingers putting away her dress away for safekeeping as she now had on cream colored lingerie that accented her bust and curves nicely. Naruto stared at Hestia with a large blush on his face. He figured Hestia's figure was great but this exceeded his thoughts. She had a figure that would trump Aphrodite's. She had freckles lining her chest and breasts that only added to her beauty. She had a tan tone to her body and her legs were very toned. He was taken out of his thoughts by Hestia giggling, come on dear, instead of staring how about we start on the family making, she says making him blush, but not as he used her blessing to put away his tuxedo so he was only in his boxers. He smiled as he got on top of Hestia only for her to flip him so she was on top. Lemon start. You just relax and let your wife show you some love, she said as she pulled down his boxers and gasped at the size of his member. She kissed her husband deeply as she slides her nightgown off, giving Naruto a full view of her body. Her nipples were a light brown color that seemed to make her body even more beautiful. She smiled at him while she licked his member up and down and sucking softly on his tip making him groan. She giggled and kissed the tip as she sat up and continued to rub his member. He rubbed her chest softly as he licked her right nipple making her moan before she pushed him back on the bed. She slid off her panties and positioned herself over his member. He stopped her before she lowered herself down onto him. Hestia, before you do, do this, I want to tell you I love you so much and I can't wait to have a family with you, he said as he kissed her deeply, wrapping his tongue around hers. She moaned into the kiss as she lowered herself down on his member. She yelped in pain as she leaned against Naruto. He gently rubbed her chest and pinched her bud softly making her moan and smile at him. She started moving up and down on his member making him moan as he groped her but as she moaned and kissed him deeply. She might have been new to all of this but she was the goddess of home, meaning she knew what happened in the bedroom, plus she was the eldest Olympian so of course she knew how everything went. He rubbed her thighs as she kept moving on top of him. 
though he wanted to be the one to make her feel good since this was her first time. He quickly flipped them and rubbed her butt making her squirm. He slowly started moving making her let out a moan. He gradually got faster until she was moaning louder. Harder she said with a moan as she wrapped her legs around him to keep him inside her. He nodded and started thrusting harder as he squeezed her butt in between his thumb and forefinger making her grab onto the sheets in ecstasy. Hestia, I'm almost dash, he said until a kiss from his wife cut him off. He felt her legs tighten around him more as her tongue wrapped around his. He let out a moan as he released inside her as she moaned and fell back on the bed. She had a warm smile on her face as she was out of breath and stroked his cheek. Dear, I love you so much, she said as she kept her legs around him to keep him in. He kissed her hand, I love you too darling, he said as he flipped them around so she could lay on top of him and relax. Lemon End They rel he relaxed for a few minutes as she caught her breath and enjoyed the feeling of being with her husband before she smiled at him. Ready for round two? She asked making her husband smile. He nodded and kissed her lovingly, we aren't leaving until we know you are pregnant, he says making her blush darkly as he started again. Talia it had been a month or so since they returned from her father's wedding. Time went differently between dimensions. They had only been in the elemental nations for around a week or two after the wedding to see where her father had grown up at. When they returned to their home, they realized nearly four months have passed. And, basically, the timeline for the fourth book is happening aka it's June or July. The wedding happened two months after the third book ended and the time delay added four months making it be around that time. I'm terrible at timelines so please be understanding XD. Amaterasu told them it was a one-time mistake due to the fact there were so many Shinto gods and goddess in one place as well as Greek gods and goddesses. All the divine energy messed with the portal, desyncing the time between the realms. She said when her father returned, he wouldn't be affected by it and only roughly a week would go by for him. Time was weird, she didn't question it but it didn't really bother her. She was happy for her father and mother. She knew how difficult it had been for them to be able to get this far considering her chastity oath and the fact Hera would never all her to marry. They deserved all their honeymoon, however long it may be. She was happy her father was the smart man he was. She was truly happy being his daughter and was glad that she found him those years ago. She still needed to truly thank him for everything, especially his latest gift to her. Flashback She was following her father through the forest around camp until they arrived at large clearing. Wow, this is so cool. Is that the tree you made by killing the Nemean lioness for the first time? She asked as he nodded. Yes, it is Talia. I made it to my own private clearing. I mostly use it for contemplation and relaxation, you can do the same, but that isn't why I brought you today he said as he turned around and sat down in front of her motioning for her to do the same. Okay? So why did you bring me here dad? She asked confused. Her dad always had a reason for everything he did. He wasn't one to waste people's times, even if it seemed at times he did. You always had to look underneath the underneath according to her father. He chuckled and unsealed the vial containing Shursue's left eye and placed it on the ground making her shudder. I want to give you this. I realized I can't always be there for you, there will be times I have to be elsewhere to help and I know you are immensely strong, easily enough to give some Olympian gods like Ares or Artemis a run for their money but consider this a last resort item he said making her raise an eyebrow. How am I supposed to use an eye as an item unless, she said as she started in shock. You want to transplant the eye in me? She asked, confused. He nodded, yes, this eye is very special, he said as he held it up. It is called the Sharingan and it roughly holds half the aspect of my eyes, he said, turning on his special eyes. His eyes had weirded her out when they first started traveling together but now, she found them awesome. Her father could do amazing things due to his eyes. So, what, what abilities does the eye have? She asked as he handed it to her to let her look at it. The eye had a four-point pinwheel design on it and it gave her a weird feeling, as if it was actually staring at her instead of just floating in the vial of solution. 
According to Shirsuwe's diary, which I still need to thank Amaterasu Obachan for, he could materialize a Susano that could use chakra needles as an added defense and offense. Also, it can use a lance or a spear, that'll be good for you he said, making her widen her eyes. She had seen her father's Susano, and it was a force of destruction. It was also an incredible defense whenever he had to use it. Also, I'm guessing since Amaterasu Obachan gave it to me it can use her flames, he said as he flipped through some pages. But the most interesting ability, and be warned you are only to use this in a matter of extreme life and death, would have to be Koto Amatsukami, he said with frown. She nodded. She knew her dad was serious about it. She only heard that tone whenever he was ordering her to do something to protect her. What does this Koto whatever it is do? She asked. He frowned a bit Koto Amatsukami basically rewrites someone's mind. You can give them new experiences, memories, and their loyalty. But you are not to use it on anyone he said in a serious tone again. Why not? We could get Ethan to stop fighting on you know whose side she said making her father shake his head. We do not control others free will. We can place them under Jinjutsus to mess with them and make them see what we want them to but we don't make them someone new he said in a deadly serious tone. He sighed as he ran his hand through his hair. There was once a man named Danzo Shimura. He wanted to control my old village from the shadows as he felt he knew best for them. He took Shursue's right eye to use for his own. He was obsessed with the Sharingan he said as she nodded along, showing she was listening. She loved hearing her dad's old stories. He always had the coolest fights or knew the coolest people. He was so obsessed with it that he used Koto Amatsukami to a very very minor degree to control a man named Itachi Uchiha to go through with his plan to kill the entire Uchiha clan so Danzo could loot the eyes from the dead Uchiha members he said as he frowned at the sky. But he didn't have perfect control over Itachi. The man was able to spare his little brother and once back in control he set his brother down a path of revenge so in the future Itachi could die at the hands of his brother, atoning for the sins he had done he said as she frowned. That is why we do not control. People have the right to choose their decisions and make their own path. The only reason you can use this ability is to make them choose not to kill you or someone you love he said as she nodded. I understand dad she said as she smiled at him. She understood him clearly. If her old self had this ability, she shivered at what she would do with it. So, you are going to transplant it? She asked as he nodded. He put his hand on the ground and sent chakra through the ground creating a wooden operating table. I will place you under a genjutsu to induce sleep until I send a burst of churka through you. I will also draw up a seal so you can turn it on and off as it can be very draining he said as she nodded. He placed his hand on her head as she started to fall asleep and fall back. He caught her and laid her on the table, starting the transplant. Flashback over. She had been training for the few months. Once it was in her the 4-pin wheel design changed to 8-pin wheel design. She was able to turn the eye off using the seal her dad placed on the inside of her eyelid. She was incredibly thankful for that cause the second she turned it on the first time she immediately felt the drain. It wasn't too bad until she activated the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan form of it. She was able to use Amaterasu with little difficulty though the first time she did it her eye bled for a few minutes. She could summon parts of the Susano but her whole body felt of fire while using it. Her father told her it was normal and it would stop happening the more she trained with it. Then there was Koto Amatsukami. She was unable to train in it so she had read up extensively on it from Shursue's diary. She felt she could use it if she needed to. Also, she found genjutsus were incredibly easier now. She could place them on people without eye contact. All she had to was send a pulse on her churka through the eye and cast the genjutsu through it. She was glad her father modified it so when she turned it off it was still her natural electric blue color instead of coal black. She sighed as she laid back in her bed and smiled once she felt another weight join her on the bed. 
She looked down to see Annabeth, her girlfriend, nuzzling against her. Hi there Annie, she says as she kisses her cheek. Annabeth giggled and kissed her girlfriend before laying on top of her. Being bold today, Annie? She said with a chuckle. Annabeth blushed, well since we have the whole cabin to ourselves, I thought we might enjoy it, she said as she kissed Talia's neck making the black-haired girl squirm as she bit her lip. Yuri seen, be warned. Talia held in a small moan as Annabeth groped her high below C-cup chest. Annabeth was usually shy in their make-out sessions except for the few times she took lead in the beginning, like she was doing now. Annabeth kissed her girlfriend deeply, rubbing against and wrapping hers around Talia's. She always found that Talia tasted like honey and strangely cherries. She ran her hands under her punkish girlfriend's shirt making Talia moan again. Talia squirmed underneath Annabeth. The farthest they had ever gone was groping over their clothes, she was a little nervous but she enjoyed the new territory they were going over. She let Annabeth take off her bra as she slid it out from under her shirt. Annabeth looked to her nervously, I'm not going too fast, am I? She asked in a nervous tone. Talia shook her head and ran her hand under Annabeth's shirt to do the same. But she went a step further to grope Annabeth's modest medium B-cup chest. Chest. She pinched her nipples softly making Annabeth moan and arch her back. Annabeth looked down with a large blush on her face as she buried her face in the crook of Talia's neck. She ran her shaky hands under Talia's shirt and groped her girlfriend's chest, feeling her nipples hard making Annabeth smirk. She placed her mouth over where Talia's nipple was and nibbled on it softly making the punk girl moan loudly, not worrying about noise as Naruto had the entire cabin silenced with privacy seals. Ah uh, Annie, no fair Talia says in between moans as the girlfriend continues to nibble on her nipples while groping her. Talia's hands were still around Annabeth's chest but she was too weak to do anything since Annabeth was taking charge again. Annabeth pinched and rolled Talia's nipples in between her fingers making her moan louder. She was about to pull up Talia's shirt until they heard a knock at their door. Yuri seen over. The two girls jumped a few feet off the bed and rushed to put on their bras before answering the door, though they had massive blushes on their faces. Talia answered the door with an annoyed look on her face as she saw Luke standing there what? She yelled in an annoyed tone. Well sorry, didn't mean to interrupt anything but Chiron wants the counselors of Hestia and Athena cabin for a meeting since we have a new trainer apparently. Someone by the name of Quintus he said as the two girls glared at him. He knew they were going out. Hell, he was happy for them and often ran interference for Naruto so they could have alone time though he was nearly 100% he had no problem with it but he understood their worry about it. Talia grumbled fine, we'll be there soon she said as she closed the door again. Again. Luke chuckled and grabbed one of the cookies that was always in Hestia cabin and went off to the big house. Talia looked at Annabeth with a frown well we better leave for meeting, she says before Annabeth kisses her deeply again making her lean against the door to kiss her back. Annabeth broke the kiss with a smile yeah, let's go she says before walking away, leaving a slight sway to her hips. She was glad she talked to Aphrodite cabin for some tips under the guise of an illusion. Talia blushed dark again no fair Annie. She yells frustrated as she followed her girlfriend out the cabin. They reached the big house and Talia's blush had died down. They entered to see everyone already there. Chiron smiled good we have the counselors of all present cabins, we can begin he says as Talia sits down the Hestia's chair and Annabeth sits in Athena's. This year I decided we need a swordsman to train all of you. Someone who has years of experience he said as a man roughly her father's age if not a few years older walks in with a hellhound. He had gray hair and gray eyes that made her think Athena but shook the thought way as he did have an aura like a demigod of hers. Oddly he felt like a child of Hephaestus. Everyone got on guard at the sight of the hellhound except for Luke, Annabeth and her. Relax guys it's peaceful she says as she pets the very large mastiff as it patted and smiled at her. Being a sage made her very empathic, like her father though his was a bloodline sort of thing from holding Karama in him. How can you tell? Lee from Apollo Cabin asked confused. I'm a sage, I can feel emotions to a minor extent but this hellhound literally is like a big ball of playfulness and kindness. The only harm it can do is if it is sicked on one of us she said as the man smiled to her. 
Glad to see someone isn't afraid of Mrs. O'Leary, she gets so upset when people get afraid of her, he said as he pets the hellhound making it bark, thus making everyone cover their ears. The dog barked slightly louder than an artillery gun. Sorry, sorry about her, she was saying hi, I am Quintus, the new swordsman here to train you all, he said, flashing a kind smile. Talia had a weird feeling about him, but she would just keep an eye on him for now. Well, glad to meet you. I'm Talia Atsutsuki, daughter of Naruto Atsutsuki. Ex-child of Asshole King and adopted daughter of Hestia, who my dad is the champion of she said making Quintus nod. I have heard of the son of chaos, kind of hard not to considering all the gossip flowing around about him and his achievements. Especially considering Artemis speaks so highly of him according to many nymphs on Olympus he said as Dionysus, who had been sleeping until now, grumbled. Yeah, the kid has stirred around a lot of trouble, but he's doing a somewhat okay job, he said drinking his diet coke. That's all for now, go back to doing whatever you were before he said as everyone grumbled at the wine god. Annabeth smiled as she made her way back to Hestia cabin, she wanted to continue what she and Talia were doing but Chiron stopped her please Talia and Annabeth, stay behind for a moment. I have a mission for the two of you he said as they frowned. Fine, what do you want us to do? Talia said with a groan, she really just wanted to return to what she and Annabeth were doing. Annabeth chuckled as Chiron cleared his throat while considering the recent increase in monsters I think it would be wise to bring Percy to camp considering he is a child of the big three and his scent would attract attention he said as Talia groaned. Fine, we'll go pick up seaweed brain she said as she made her way to the door. Just give me a moment to gather our stuff then we can head off she said as she left the big house. We can handle it easily so no worries, Chiron she said as the mentor to heroes nodded as Annabeth left. Talia, Talia gathered her things quickly and snatched a few cookies from the cabin before leaving to meet Annabeth at her old tree. It felt weird naming it after herself when she had only been in it for roughly a day. Didn't make any better of an experience but still weird nonetheless. She wore her Nemean lioness cloak that was essentially a golden fleece and her storage scroll strapped to her waist. Her swords were sealed away in her wrists where they usually were unless she was going into battle. She saw Annabeth waiting by the tree. Come on Annabeth, I really just want to get this over with, she said with a groan as Annabeth giggled. Why are you looking forward to continuing what we were doing in your room? She said in a sultry tone as she blew at her ear making Talia blush dark and grumble about teasing girlfriends. She continued to grumble as she ran her hands through the seals summoning Jutsu, eagle contract she said as a medium-sized eagle appeared in a cloud of smoke. Talia-sama, where may I take you today? A kind-sounding female voice said as the eagle ruffled her feathers. Shuruwe, I need you to fly me and Annabeth to Percy. I can direct you to his energy she said as she drew the abilities of her cloak to her making her appearance change showing she was in sage mode. Shuruwe nodded and opened her wings, accepting them on. Wait, the asshole king is awake, do we have to worry about him? She asked making Shuruwe giggle. He has no power over who we allow to fly on us. We may begrudgingly be his sacred animal, but we are the rulers of the sky and nothing in its domain can target us she said as they took off. Annabeth held on to her as they flew. Sure. They could hold on to Shirue, but Annabeth wanted to tease her girlfriend a bit more. She slowly slid her hands under Talia's shirt, making her squeak. Talia glared at Annabeth, not now any, she said as she squirmed. We can do this later, please, she said, making Annabeth pout. Fine, she said as she kissed Talia's neck as she relaxed and enjoyed the flight. Talia, Talia rolled her eyes. Sometimes Annabeth was too focused on making out. Eventually they made it to where Percy was, it was a place called Good High School. She had a bad feeling as she could feel some dark energies in the school. Watch out Annabeth, there might be some trouble, she said as Annabeth unsealed her trench knives and kept them in her pockets. Talia activated her Sharingan to find Percy near the back of the school and three monsters were making their way towards him. Even if Percy didn't have Chakra his demigod energy gave off a similar feeling to Chakra. Come on Annabeth, I fear seaweed brain is getting into trouble, she said as they rushed through the school. She used her Sharingan to cast anyone who noticed them under a genjutsu. It was like the mist, but much stronger as they didn't notice them whatsoever. 
They burst through the door to see Percy holding off against four Impauzai with a red-haired girl behind him. Guys, what are you doing here? He said as he dodged the slash from one Impauzai. We are here to pick you up and I've got to say we came at the right time, she said as she unsealed her Kiba blades making them coarse with lightning chakra as Annabeth put on her trench knives and infused them with wind chakra. Isn't Naruto back yet? He asked making the red head look shocked at them. Talia noticed it but shook her head not yet, we need to hurry though as the longer we are out here the more monsters will arrive, she said as Percy nodded and Talia dashed and slashed straight through the Impazai, sending it back to Tartarus. Her blades weren't the sharpest of the seven for nothing. Damn, we were told only the sea spawn would be here not the damn used to be sk sky spawn one Impazai with a name tag reading Tammy said as another glared at her. Shut up. We can still handle them. Go after Athena's spawn. She's the weakest. The Impazai with the Kelly name tag yelled as the last Impazai jumped at Annabeth. Annabeth smirked as she ducked under the slash as charged her trench knife with more wind chakra and launched a large wind blade at the Impazai wind style, wind of the north. The Impazai burst into golden dust, making the last two frown. Tammy was about to say something until Percy cut off her head. Kelly frowned and backed up, this won't be the last time you see me or any of Kronos' army, she says as she disappears in a burst of fire before Talia could cut off her head. Damn. Not good she said as she shot a medium-sized water bullet at the ground, dousing the flame left behind. What the hell happened here? The red-haired girl yelled, this is like the damn damn all over again, she said, grumbling before turning to Percy. And you mentioned Naruto. How do you know him? I've tried calling him, but I don't know how to work this damn thing. She yells throwing a marker down on the ground, but it just clattered on the ground. Wait, you know my dad? Talia asked as she picked up the marker. He's your dad? He promised to explain everything about the skeletons and his weird eyes later, but he never explained how to work the damn thing. He said stab it in the ground, but he never came she said with a frown. Well, he is away on his honeymoon, so that is why, but if he gave you this then, he will explain, he's just busy, she said as she handed it back to the girl. What's your name? She asked. Rachel Elizabeth Dare, she said as she put it back in her pocket. She was confused by this all, and it annoyed her a bit, but something told her to trust her. Talia could hear people coming their way, and she really didn't feel like wasting time by putting them all in Jinjutsus. We have to hurry Chiron expects us back, she says as Percy nods and puts Riptide away as they put away their weapons as well. She turned off her Sharingan and sighed. Sighed. You can go out the back way, no one should bother you Rachel said as they nodded and started to rush out. I'll keep the marker stabbed in my room so your dad can explain everything to me because this really hurts my head she said making Talia chuckle. He will get to it as soon as he can. Thanks for the help she said as they ran out leaving behind a headache induced Rachel. Talia quickly summoned her eagles so they could take off. She had felt more monsters making their way towards them. Well at least you didn't get kicked out of school this time seaweed brained Talia said making Percy stare at her blankly. Haha <laughs> very funny he said dryly. Just tell me what's going on in camp he said as he relaxed on his eagle while Annabeth and Talia were sharing another. This would have annoyed him since he had feelings for Annabeth, but he didn't feel like it anymore. His feelings for her seemed to fade away, which he was somewhat thankful for, it was getting awkward at times. Talia looked to Annabeth as the girl sighed and got to explaining. From the fact that Naruto wasn't back to Quintus and his pet hellhound Mrs. O'Leary. Wow, sounds interesting. Any news on Ethan? Percy said, making Talia frown. No. I can't sense him and my dad isn't here to help so we are on our own until he returns, she says as she stares ahead of them. But he believes we can handle ourselves and we have to until he gets back, she says as Percy nods. Whatever happens we can handle it, he said, as they reached the camp border. Talia frowned as Annabeth was called away by Clarice. She knew it had to do with Grover, but she really wanted to get back to the cabin to have fun with her girlfriend. Maybe you can go train in the arena, my dad would be glad to know you didn't get lazy while he was gone she said with a smirk making Percy chuckle. Sounds like a plan to me, he said as he left. 
Talia, being the last one in the clearing side, and looked up at the sky. Sky. She really wanted her father back, it was somewhat boring without him here. Naruto. He nuzzled against his wife as she smiled and kissed his chest. While making love for most of the night, every night for a week, we can assume I'm pregnant from all of that, she said making him blush. Well, I had to make sure he said, making her giggle. I can't wait to be a mother, she said making him smile happily. His grandmother sent him a letter about the weird time delay and how when they returned, they would be aged around four months forward. It was weird, but it didn't matter, they said there were no adverse effects of it. It also meant that Hestia would instantly be halfway through her pregnancy. She was a bit upset that she would be losing out at half the experience, but after a promise from her husband of more children she accepted it. I think we have been away from Olympus long enough and I do miss the little animals that Artemis is looking after for us, she said as Naruto nodded and summoned clones to get things together. Mostly he just wanted to cuddle some more. She smiled and kissed her husband, don't worry, since my domain isn't too busy, but I feel that you will have to deal with Zeus and Hera once they find out about it all, she said as he nodded. If they lay a hand on you, I will break them, he said in a serious tone as she kissed his forehead. I know you will dear, but I will only call you if I can't handle them. I can be very convincing when I want to she says making him chuckle. The clones whistled getting his attention. They finished getting everything together making him groan. Damn clones couldn't take their time, he thought as he sat up. She giggled and used her blessing to clothe them as they got off the bed. She smiled at the cabin I would love to come here again sometime in the future when everything calms down she said as he nodded. Don't worry, we will. We can even bring our future children, he said, making her smile. Gonna have to make it bigger since we are going to have a lot. A lot. He always wanted a big family and so did Hestia so that worked perfectly. She held onto his hand and smiled to him, ready whenever you are, she said as he nodded and used a marker in the cabin to flash back. It took a bit more energy since he was technically crossing dimensions in one warp but it was safe and he had more than enough energy to do it. Hestia Cabin They arrived and instantly Hestia nearly fell but he caught her and smiled as she was rubbing her belly with a huge smile. She was clearly pregnant and she loved it. Tears of joy were coming from her as she rubbed her belly. You look lovely darling, he said, kissing her cheek. Like a natural and loving mother. She cried a bit more before wiping her tears away and accepting the help up from him. I need to go get the animals. I love you she said as she kissed him lovingly. He returned the kiss equally as she smiles and flashes away. He smiled happily as he left the cabin to frown. He could sense worry and panic as he saw everyone searching around. What's going on here? He asked with a frown as Luke looked to him worried. Everyone else looked scared since they heard when Naruto got angry, while gods went into comas. We lost Talia, Annabeth and Percy during a war game. We can't find them. Not even when I look for their energy signature he says making Naruto frown as he activated his eyes and hoped his daughter remembered about her earrings and was in contact with everyone. Animal path, summoning Jutsu he yelled as cloud of smoke filled the area. See I told you I could guide us out, wait this isn't my doing he hears Talia say as he let out a chuckle. No Talia, that was me, though I am glad you were holding on to everyone he said as he was tackled in a hug from his daughter. Dad. You're back. She said with a smile. Is she? He asked curious. Naruto nodded yup, four months along considering the weird time lapse, but she is happy and loves it he said, before smiling to Annabeth, to Annabeth and Percy. Now I think you need to explain where you three were. I couldn't feel your markers as they were acting weird, but I'm glad that the path worked. Talia nods and turns to Luke tell Chiron we found the labyrinth and Ethan's trying to use it she said as Luke frowned and went off to get Chiron to call a meeting. We'll go with him Talia Annabeth said motioning to Percy who nodded along. You fill in your dad before coming to the meeting. Shouldn't take too long she said as they went off. So, do anything interesting while I was gone? He asked making her withhold a blush and shrug her shoulders. Not much but there were a few she said before she leads him to the big house and start explaining everything. 
They make it to the big house as he strokes his chin in Quintus, I'll have to meet him. And I'm glad Rachel is okay, I really owe an explanation to her he said with a frown. She heads up the stairs and looks down at her father you coming? She asks. He shook his head no, you have this handled and you always know how to contact me if you need it he said flashing her a smile. And you have everything you need to be anything in your way he said as she looked nervous but nodded. Thanks dad. Love you she said making him smile. I love you too Talia, you're welcome he said as he walked off. He needed to visit this labyrinth for his own and look over this Quintus. He reached the arena to see the gray-haired, gray-eyed man sharpening a sword while the large hellhound nibbled on a shield. He activated his eyes and instantly frowned. He saw that the man's body was entirely made of metal, like Nagato's Azura Path. He could see a soul inside it powering it. He could see a partridge mark on the soul of the man. He knew that curse mark since Athena seemed to be the one to mostly use birds in the form of curses. The mark of Perdix used to show how Deadless let him die. This wasn't Quintus, it was Deadless. He'd keep it silent for now until it was needed for others to know. So, you're Naruto Atsutsuki, son of chaos? He asked as he continued to sharpen the sword. Yes, I was away dealing with some things of mine, he said as he pets the hellhound making it pant and smile. Hope you do well at teaching, he said as he shook the man's hand, leaving a smaller version of a Horatian marker on him, keeping it hidden. The man looked a bit confused, but went back to work, not noticing the seal. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfiction. Looking forward to having you on board again.